And we are. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fearless Floyd Show. I am your host. It's me, Fearless Floyd, as always. Uh, hang on one second. Uh, all right, I'm back. It is uh, Thursday night, January 26, 2023. And I wanted to kind of discuss to you guys a little bit about the RV, what's really been going on with Iraq, um, what's happening with the dollar. You have to look at it like this. I showed you an article the other day that the uh, income from Iraq, from the sales of their oil and petrodollars, are in a United States bank and the Federal Reserve and U.S. Treasury will only allow $2.5 billion to be released every 90 days to Iraq. So Iraq can function as a corporate government. We all know that, but fun function as a, as a government. <clears throat> Iraq needs more money than that. They cannot live on $2.5 million every 90 days. So to give you an example, of exactly what is going on so you understand. Um, let me share here. All right, this is OPEC's website, OPEC.org, Iraq Facts and Figures. Output petroleum, oh, sorry, uh, crude oil exports, okay? 1,000 barrels per day. So they're putting out roughly about 3.5 million barrels of oil per day that they're selling at this amount. Oops. Uh, uh, the gear. All right, right here, crude oil. And this is the uh, U.S. Energy Information Administration, EIA.gov. So basically about roughly 80 bucks, give or take, right? 3.5 million. So let's just do, do a little math for you guys so you can kind of get a comprehension of what's going on. One too many. 3.5 million times 80 equals $280 million times 90 because remember, they're getting paid $2.5 billion per 90 days, right? That's $25 billion, $200 million that they're making every 90 days. They're only getting $2.5 billion of that. So, Uh, they are leaving on the table $22,700,000,000 that they can't get every 90 days. So they have this big war chest of about roughly $100 billion in the United States that they can't get. So obviously within the last 48 hours, Iraq sent another group to the United States. So what did that group go do? Okay, because they just sent a group there like at the beginning of uh, what, last week? Well, the second group, they went to go get that money. They went to load it on some planes and bring it back to Iraq. That's what's going on, I guarantee you. So let me read you this article. And I haven't read it, so I, I can't tell you everything about it. Like my new mic. <laughs> Yeah, moving up in the world. Um, up. Well, there it is. All right, I'm. Um, 
going to go back to this site because I was actually looking for that article and found this article. And when I found this one, I was like, what? All right, here's the cradle again. Global South, gold-backed currencies to replace the U.S. dollar. The adoption of commodity-backed currencies by the Global South could upend the U.S. dollar's dominance and level the pay playing field in international trade. This is from January 19th, 2023 by Pepe Escobar. You see the players. All right. Let's start with three interconnected, multipolar driven facts. First, one of the key takeaways from the World Economic Forum annual shindig in Davos, Switzerland, is when Saudi Finance Minister Mohammed al Hadin on a panel on Saudi Arabia's transformation made it clear that Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, will consider training in currencies other than the U.S. dollar. Yeah, that, that made big time news. So is the petro yuan finally at hand? Possibly. But al Yadin uh, wisely opted for careful hedging. Quote, we enjoy a very strategic relationship with China, and we enjoy that same strategic relationship with other nations including the U.S., and we want to develop that with Europe and other countries, close quote. Second, the central banks of Iran and Russia are studying the adoption of a stable coin for foreign trade settlements, replacing the U.S. dollar, ruble, and real. The crypto crowd is already up in arms, mulling the pros and cons of a gold-backed central bank digital currency, CBDC, for trade that will be, in fact, impervious to the weaponized U.S. dollar. A gold-backed digital currency. The really attractive issue here is this gold-backed digital currency would be particularly effective in the spe special economic zone of Astrakhan, Astrakhan in the Caspian Sea. Astrakhan is the key Russian port participating in the international north-south transportation corridor with Russia processing cargo traveling across Iran and merchant ships all the way to West Asia, Africa, Indian Ocean, and South Asia. The success of the INSTC, progressively tied to a global back CBDC, will largely hinge on whether scores of Asian, West African, West Asian, and African nations refuse to apply U.S. dictated sanctions on both Russia and Iran. Well, guess how that's going to play out. As it stands, exports are mostly energy and agricultural products. Iranian companies are the third largest importer of Russian grain. Next will be turbines, polymers, medical equipment, and car parts. Only the Russia-Iran section of the INSTC represents a $25 billion business. And then there's the crucial energy angle of INSTC, whose main players are the Russian-Iran-India triad. India's purchases, oh, by the way, India just surpassed China in population, uh, 1.4 something billion. <clears throat> just read that. So, India's purchase of Russian crude have increased year by year by a whopping factor of 33. India is the world's third largest importer of oil. In December, it received 1.7 barrels from Russia, which for several months now has positioned ahead of Iraq and Saudi Arabia as Dell. Delhi's top supplier, a fair payment system. Third, South, South Africa holds this year's rotating BRICS presidency, and this year will mark the start of BRICS plus expansion with candidates ranging from Algeria, Iran, and Argentina to Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates. South African Foreign Minister Nalidi Pandor uh, has just confirmed that the BRICS do not do want to find a way to bypass the U.S. dollar and thus create, quote, a fair payment system not skewed toward wealthier countries, close quote. For years now, Yaroslav Lysovolik, head of the analytical department of Russian Burbank's corporate and investment business, has been a proponent of closer BRICS integration and the uh, adoption of BRICS reserve currency. The Savolik reminds us that the first proposal, quote, to create a new reserve currency based on a basket of currency of BRICS countries 
was formulated by the Valdai Club back in 2018. Close quote. Are you ready for the R5? <clears throat> the original idea revolved around a currency basket similar to the special drawing rights SDR model composed of the national currencies of BRICS members. And then further down the road, other currencies of the expanded BRICS plus circle. Lisa Volek explains that choosing BRICS national currencies made sense because, quote, these were among the most liquid currencies across emerging markets. The, the name for the new reserve currency R5 or R5 plus was based on the first letter of the BRICS currencies all of which began with the letter R, real, ruble, rupee, renminbi, and ron. So BRICS already have a platform for their in-depth deliberations in 2023. As Lesovalik uh, notes, quote, in the longer run, the R5 BRICS currency could start to perform the role of settlements payments as well as store of value reserves for the central bank's emerging market economies. Close quote. It is virtually certain that the Chinese yuan will be prominent right from the start, taking advantage of its, quote, already advanced reserve status, close quote. Potential candidates that could become part of the R5 plus currency basket include the Singapore dollar and the United Arab Emirates dirham. I hope I said that correct. Quite diplomatically, Lisa Volek maintains that, quote, the R5 project can thus become one of the most important contributions of emerging markets to building a more secure international financial system, close quote. The R5 or R5 plus project does not, does intersect with what is being designed as the Eurasia Economic Union, EAEU, led by the macroeconomics minister of the Eurasia Economic Commission, Sergei Glazev, a new gold standard. In golden ruble 3.0, his most recent paper, Glazyev makes a direct reference to two by now notorious reports by Credit Suisse strategist Zoltan Pulsar, formerly of the IMF, International Monetary Fund, U.S. Department of Treasury, and New York Federal Reserve, War and Commodity Encumbrance, December 27th, and War and Currency Statecraft, December 29th. Poser is a staunch supporter of Bretton Woods 3, an idea that has been getting enormous traction among the Fed's skeptical crap. What's quite intriguing is that the American Posner now directly quotes Russia's Glasdiff in a, and vice versa, implying a fascinating convergence of their ideas. Let's start with Glazyev's emphasis on the importance of gold. He notes the current accumulation of multi-billion dollar cash balances on the accounts of Russian exporters and the soft currencies in the banks of Russia's main foreign economic partners, the EAEU nations, China, India, Iran, Turkey, and the United Arab Emirates. He then proceeds to explain how gold can be a unique tool to fight Western sanctions if the prices of oil, gas, food, and fertilizers, metals, and solid minerals are recalculated. Quote, fixing the price of oil and gold at a level of two barrels per one gram will give a second increase in the, in the price of gold in dollars, calculated credit, credit Swiss strategist Zoltan Polzar. This would be an adequate response to the price ceilings introduced by the West, kind of a floor, a solid foundation. And India and China can take the place of the global commodity traders instead of Glencore and Trapigra. Close quote. So here we see Glazyev and Poznar converging. Quite a few major players in New York will be amazed. Glazyev then lays down the road toward golden ruble 3.0. The first gold standard was lobbied by the Rothschilds in the 19th century, which, quote, gave them an opportunity to subordinate continental Europe to the, to the British financial system through gold loans, close quote. Golden ruble 1.0, writes Glazyev, quote, provided the, the process of capitalist accumulation, close quote. Golden Ruble 2.0, after Bretton Woods, quote, ensured a rapid economy, economic recovery after the war, close quote. But then the, quote, reformer, Khrushchev, canceled the peg of the ruble to gold, 
carrying out monetary reform in 1961 with the actual devaluation of the ruble by 2.5 times, forming conditions for the subsequent transformation of the country, Russia, into, quote, raw material appendage of the Western financial system, close quote. When Glazyev proposes now is for Russia to boost gold mining by as much as 3% of the GDP, the basis for fast growth of the entire commodity sector, 30% of Russian GDP. With the country becoming a world leader in gold production, it gets, quote, a strong ruble, strong budget, and a strong economy, close quote. All Global South eggs in one basket. Meanwhile, at the heart of the EAU, EU discussions, Glazyev, Glazyev seems to be designing a new currency, not only based on gold, but partly based on the oil and natural gas reserves of participating countries. Posner seems to consider this potentially inflationary. It could be it. It could be it. It results in some excesses, considering the new currency would be linked to such a large base. Off the record, New York banking sources admit the U.S. dollar would be quote wiped out, since it is a valueless fiat currency. Should Sergei Glazyev link the new currency to gold? The reason is that the Bretton Woods system no longer has a gold base and no intrinsic value, like the FTX cryptocurrency. Sergey's plan also linking the currency to oil and natural gas seems to be a winner, close quote. So in fact, Glazyev may be creating the whole currency structure for what Posner called half in jest the, quote, G7 of the East, close quote. The current five BRICS plus the next two, which will be the first new members of BRICS plus. Both Glazyev and Posner know better than anyone that when Bretton Woods was created, the U.S. possessed most of the central bank gold and controlled half the world's GDP. This was the basis for the U.S. to take over the world's global financial system. Well, not the U.S., the Federal Reserve. So let's correct that. Now, vast swaths of the non-Western world are paying close attention to Glazyev and the drive towards the new non-dollar currency, complete with a new gold standard which would in time totally replace the U.S. dollar. Posner completely understood how Glatchev in pursuing a formula featuring a basket of currencies as Lisbolic suggested as much as, it, as much as he understood the groundbreaking drive towards the petro yawn, he describes the industrial ramifications thus, quote, since we have just said Russia, Iran, and Venezuela account for about 40% of the world's proven oil reserves, and each of them are currently selling oil to China for remembi at a steep discount, we find that BASF's decision to permanently downsize its operations at its main plant in Ludwig, Ludwigshafen and instead Ludwigshafen. There you go. There's my, there's my German. And instead shift its chemical operations to China was motivated by the fact that China is securing energy at discounts, not markups like Europe, because they're big influence. Okay, they're taking over. They are, we're no longer Uncle Sam. <laughs> China has taken over. The race to replace the dollar. One key takeaway is that energy intensive major industries are going to be moving to China. Beijing has already become a big exporter of Russian liquefied natural gas, LNG, to Europe. While India has become a big exporter of Russian oil and refined products such as diesel, also to Europe. Both China and India, BRICS members, oh, excuse me, buy below market price for fellow BRICS members, Russia, and resell to Europe with a hefty profit. Sanctions? What sanctions? Nobody's paying to the United States sanctions. Why? Because we have a weak, feeble, brain dead guy apparently at the head of the head of the helm. Meanwhile, the race to constitute a new currency basket for a new monetary unit is on. This long distance dialogue between Glasyev and Posner will become even more fascinating as Glasyev will be trying to find a solution to what Posner has stated. Tapping the natural resources for the creation of the new currency could be inflationary if money supply is increased too quickly. All that is happening as Ukraine, a huge chasm at a critical junction of the new Silk Road blocking off Europe 
from Russia and China, slowly but surely disappears into the black void. The empire may have gobbled up Europe for now, but what really matters geoeconomically is how the absolute majority of the global South is deciding to commit to the Russia-China-led bloc. Economic dominance of BRICS Plus may be no more than seven years away. Whatever toxicities may be concocted by that large, dysfunctional, nuclear rogue state on the other side of the Atlantic, Uncle Sam's place. But first, let's get that new currency going. I've been telling you guys, it's coming, all right? They're talking about it openly in the mainstream media. So, there we go. That's what's going on with the RV. We're waiting on Iraq to go get their money, bring it home, or have direct access to it, unfettered <laughs> by the Federal Reserve or the United States government. So they can take their money, and then they can, boom, do their RV, so they have all that money to support the RV. That's what's going on right now. They can't give away gold. They need their money. Right? I know you don't hear this stuff from anybody else, do you? Nobody. Got my thumb on top of things. Like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, bing, leave a comment below. The Fearless Floyd Show at yahoo.com. Boom, go to my website. You can register for these classes. I'm on these platforms, among many others. I got a trust class going. You can rent this space behind me. You can lease it. You can sponsor me. You can advertise. You can do all kinds of things. Look at all this big space you got back here. Look, it's even bigger than my head. I'm kidding. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope this, uh, I hope this weekend is just grand and beautiful for everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Live to five at noon in Plano, Texas at Sky Pony Lounge, Sky Pony Gallery, I'm sorry, with Baby Trump, Chris Ferrix, Juan Sabin, and I have no idea who else is going to show up. Hopefully, I will still have my original guests. Uh, I have to take care of that first thing in the morning to uh, verify that. Um, yeah, I think I've covered everything. Hit me up on my Telegram. Be waiting on you. Love you, kids, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.